So I'm here, uh, Mark Edwards, Director of Digital Payments at Discover. Normally when I say I work for Discover, the very next question is who's Discover? What do they discover? What do they do? If we're in the US, it's probably going to be a slightly different matter. So Discover in the US are uh, a massive bank um, and the third biggest card holder um, in, in the US. So Visa, MasterCard, Discover in that order. So actually they're really, really big in the US. There's about 18,000 people there. Um, there's a campus just outside of Chicago. Um, it's probably about 15,000 people there. It's absolutely ridiculously big. Kind of decorated a bit like an 80s Mediterranean high-end hotel. It's, uh, it's pretty special. Um, and there's two parts of the business. There's direct banking, which is essentially the bank they have. They do a lot of lending for sort of students, um, the cash back, just the general bank, if you will. And then the US card issue in, so these actual Discover cards, which look like the tiny gray picture you definitely can't see there. Um, so that's about 97% of the work that's over there. The other half is the payment services, which is the 3%, and that's the bit that I work for. And you may go, well, that's you know, it's only 3%, that's not very meaningful, is it? But actually, all of this stuff is the enabler to get all the money from the other side. It's certainly what we tell ourselves to make ourselves feel worthwhile. Um, the thing is that the payment services part do is, um, if you're a bank, so if you're a Barclay card, for instance, in the UK, you need to talk to um, Visa, MasterCard, and, and Discover. We do all the networks for that, so there's certain sort of licenses. We're pretty global, we, we operate, um, it is US based, but we operate across sort of Asia and APAC, uh, Europe as well, but normally as sort of franchise model that we go through. So, huge thing in the US, um, you definitely know who we were if you were from America. What do we actually do in Farnborough, which is where we're based in Fleet? And, Sorry, in Fleet, Farnborough, which is where we're based locally. Um, Discover in Farnborough is seen as a sort of technical centre of excellence. There's about 450 uh, engineering type people there, so more of um, sort of the digital, um, to, you know, the digital payments type people. So you've got opportunities there around um, application development, so developers, uh, business analysts, so the people that can kind of go into detail about what they want. Technical management, uh, technology management, which is, I guess, what I am. So not really any real work, just sort of sitting there watching other people work. Um, data engineers as well, so things that work with big data. Um, DevOps engineers, which is the thing that you'll hear a lot about in IT. So um, automated, you know, taking stuff to production. Um, quality assurance and quality engineers, which I think in the olden days was called test. Uh, and then scrum masters as well, which is one of the things we operate is agile. And scrum masters are the kind of ring leaders that get everybody together and make sure they're going to be okay. Um, right now, we actually work just in an entrance through a shopping centre in Farnborough called the Mead Shopping Centre. As of September, we're going to move to that place. That's just a picture of it. But we're going to move to that place uh, in Farnborough Aerospace Centre, which is a brand new building. Um, you know, really, really, really nice building when you walk around it. Even if it hasn't got the furniture in at the moment, it's, it's looking really good. So that's, that's where we are. Uh, that's the kind of opportunities. Now, deep down, what do we actually do? I think before I start that, I'm probably going to have to describe to you what digital payments is in the first place. So I'm going to take you on a couple of two-minute lesson, really, about what it is. So when you do a payment, you need the following. You're going to need um, some kind of payment identifier that uniquely identifies you to a way of paying. So normally, in the olden days, that was a credit card so you, or, a, or a debit card with your, your number on it. There's a unique way of paying, it's attached to your bank account. Nowadays, it's a mobile, or it could be a piece of jewellery, or you know, a, a wristwatch. Like, um, it, or I read the other day, I think there's people in Singapore that have got implants in their fingers and hands now, which is um, weird, but it's fine if they want to do it that way. Um, the other thing is, you need the proof that this method I'm handing over actually belongs to me. So, uh, again, in the olden days, you used to have a credit card and you had a signature, and you used to compare the signature. And also, some assurance from the person that's uh, taking the money from you, you've actually got the money to pay for it when it gets to the other side. So if I'm going to take you back to somewhere like the 80s, let's say, if I was going to do a, a payment transaction, a digital payment transaction, I'd take my card and I'd put it on these things. That is a zip zap machine, apparently. And you can see the card fits in there. There's a little piece of paper that sits over the top. You slide it along and you just get those. And um, if I was to pay for that, I'd basically give my card over to the person, do a bit of a slide. They'd show me the card. They'd look, I'd obviously have my own name on there, not some random, but the, you know, they'd sign it, they'd check it and go, 
okay, I can confirm this card belongs to you. There's the method of payment, this belongs to you. The one thing they didn't have in those days is a way of proving that it was me that actually had enough money in the funds, uh, sort of funds in the, in the bank, etc. cetera. So um, what would happen really is that they take these little leaflets, they put them all on, probably on a spike, physically send them over to their bank, so uh, Discover with a physical card number written on top, and the bank would honor it up to a certain amount of money, um, but it was really a trust system. Uh, you know, the very, the very most you could offer is somebody taking your money that could look at you and know you had the money in the account just by looking in your eyes, which doesn't, isn't the most reliable way of doing things. Things have moved on from the 80s, as you might realize. The first thing we did is replace um, the bit in the middle to uh, like a proper chip and pin device or contactless that you start touching. Um, that would send the card number, instead of going onto a piece of paper, directly to the, um, the bank. The card would change as well, so you'd have a chip and pin card or a contactless card, and that's gone round. And the other thing is, you wouldn't want to see that, but I've just changed the word token on that. And that was one of the key things that happened, the key enabler. Instead of passing around your card number or dialing up and saying that, everything became tokenized. And that was the enabler that enabled mobile phones to take off. So there was a whole thing around mobile phones and then Apple Pay decided to do it properly. Google Pay followed. Um, and now, because we have a token, you can use this thing as, as, as a method of payment. And that, and the token, is essentially what we do in Discover in Farnborough. It's the enabler of all those things. Um, it, it creates the token, it stores it, and then it provides ways of loading all the card numbers, etc., onto that device, whatever that might be. So that's where we are today. I thought I'd just give you a, a minute or two, really, just around the future. So if, if uh, one of your people joined today, what they'd actually be working on uh, in the future. And this is really just a, a real quick overview of the stuff that we do and the stuff that we're looking to enable in the future. So one of the first things is, and Visa's done this really well, is a connected car. And if you can imagine, instead of a mobile phone, the method of payment or identification is your car. So it's the shape of your car, the color of your car, your, um, your number plate. So you can drive up, and we can do this today with apps and stuff, but you literally just drive up to a petrol station, for instance, or a gas station, because this was the US at the time. Um, you come in, and the, it knows it's your car. It knows some locations that it's your car, so it knows you're going to pay. Gets the film, drive off, completely frictionless, don't have to do anything. Wearables are taking off, maybe not. This, this guy has uh, a wearable in his coat, and I think that a lot of the articles you read about this is, truly, are people gonna do this? Um, so it's still up and iron. The one thing that I definitely think will happen is appliances. So you always get the example of uh, the you know, clever fridge that looks at your milk and goes, well, that looks, looks a bit like you need some more milk for your tea. I'll go and order it for you, like completely without your uh, say so, it'll go to Amazon. Uh, come and order and all of a sudden the Amazon will turn up with all the stuff that you need automatically. The reason why you can do that is around AI as well and that's the fourth one on there. So um, more and more now chatbots are being employed as you, as you go into things and you can pay using chatbots. So instead of phoning up, I've literally just had to phone up to pay for some, uh, was it, oh, getting my loft boarded weirdly. Um, so I've had to phone up and, and talk to a human being which was nice um, and give them my card number and everything. Now, more and more, you're talking to either a chatbot online or a sort of a, um, a voice chatbot with something at the front. And that's handling all of that without you really realizing it at the time. So they're the first ones, and this is called like Internet of Things, Ways to Pay, and that's one of the first sections that's coming in. The next section is really about frictionless payments. And by that, I mean, um, I forget touching anything, forget um, you know, walking in and having to find a card or anything. You just pay just by being there and it knows you. So there's a few things. So Amazon Go is the big one. So Amazon create entire stores now where you basically just walk around, chuck some stuff in a trolley and walk out. Well, the way it achieves that is that um, on your phone, you've got a, uh, the, the token, so you set up your payments. It knows because of you know, the location devices around that it was you. It also knows that it's you using your phone as well. And that's one of the key ones. You haven't just stolen a phone from someone and walked in. The reason why you can do that is that there's a lot of technology nowadays that allows you to identify it's your phone, but it's you using your phone as well. So we're doing some stuff at the moment um, where the, the, the company, as you use your phone, physically the way you type, so the way you lean, um, and also things like the number of music tracks you've suddenly got on there. So if for no reason at all, a bunch of Mariah Carey stuff was downloaded onto my phone, 
Um, they would know that and go, well, that, that's definitely not normal. No way. Um, <laughs> And so you, you would come up and, and they'd understand that maybe you're not using your phone anymore, it's a slightly different one. Sainsbury's in the UK is trying to do something similar to Amazon, um, except obviously with the, the Sainsbury's logo attached. And they're doing the first checkout free store as well. So you can go into somewhere like Waitrose and do the scanning yourself. This isn't like that, this is put your goods in there. It knows from RFID that the goods are going into your trolley. You just walk out and then you pack, you pack yourself and walk out. For the same reason, you have a, a payment system attached and you can just walk out and do this. And finally, you've got um, Barclaycard did something around Dine and Dash, which is pretty much, you, you sit there, you order your, your food, um, you know, order your drinks, etc. cetera, if, you, if that, you split the bill, and then you just walk out because it's already paid for. Um, and it's that kind of frictionless payment, it's called, so you don't actually consciously have to pay for anything. It just happens in the background. That's where the real uh, technology stuff is coming in nowadays. Um, so that's the future, and Discover in its heart, and there's a lot of things I'm under NDA for, a lot of the new future stuff, uh, is what it's trying to achieve. And it's achieving that in Farnborough as the centre of excellence for the entire of the rest of Discover, which is US-based as well. So that's me. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone.